Hi, this is Ms. Delosier, and these are your notes on water as the universal solvent, which you've all heard a bunch of times before. So what does that mean, and um, what does that have to do with anything? So first we need to review solutions. So a solution is a homogeneous mixture, um, and that just means that it's all evenly mixed throughout. So if I had salt and water, the salt and the water would be mixed throughout. There's not a pile of salt at the bottom. That's a solution. The solvent, in the super, super simple definition, is whatever we're dissolving it in. So salt water, the solvent would be water because we're dissolving it in the water. Um, and so we're really going to just talk about water as a solvent for most of the year. Our, sol our solute is going to be whatever we're dissolving. So again, in our example, salt, right? We're dissolving the salt. So water is a good solvent because it's polar. Now, I know you've heard that before, but what does that mean? Water is polar, positive and negative side, right? And so what that means is it's going to be able to dissolve anything that has a partial charge. Um, so... That's called solvation. Solvation, you, you learned about solvation in ninth grade and in 10th grade, but you learned about it as just dissolving. Um, so it's basically, if I put salt in water, it dissolves, right? We'll know really what happens is solvation. So really what's going to happen is the sodium and the chlorine are going to disassociate, and I'm going to have a positive sodium ion and a negative chlorine ion. And what's going to happen is that the molecules of the water, the solvent, are going to be attracted to the ions of the solute. So the positive sodium ion would be attracted to the negative oxygen part of the, the water molecule, whereas the chlorine molecule, which is negatively charged, would be attracted to the positive hydrogens. So let me clear that up with a picture that's a little simplified. So let's say that I have a ionic molecule. Right? It's going to have a positive charge and a negative charge, and I mix it with some water. What's going to happen is I'm going to get my positive and my negative molecules disassociating. Now, they're in water, right? So what's going to happen is I'm going to have water molecules surround both of them. Now, if you look at this one, I have my positive ion and all of the water molecules are aligning around the positive ion negative sides in. And that's actually what's happening in solvation is the water molecules are forming a shell around those um, ions that they're attracted to with the, the charges, opposite charges facing. And so the same thing's going to happen on that negative ion, except it's going to be reversed around, right? So I'm going to have my positive charges facing inwards. So that's solvation. That's important because um, it goes back to the polarity, the polar nature of water, and that's going to allow us to look at how ions interact in cells and throughout the body and those chemical reactions that are happening at a biological level that actually allow life to proceed and exist. The last thing that we want to talk about with water and solvents and dissolving is pH and specifically acids and bases. Um, so this is review. Um, and it's going to be short review. Acids, bases, pH scale, right? So 0 to 14 with neutral in the center. So acids have an increased concentration of hydrogen ions. Okay, the little brackets mean concentration. They also um, remove hydroxide ions. Okay, so acids increased hydrogen ion, decreased hydroxide ion. So an example is hydrochloric acid. You know that HCl, hydrochloric acid. Bases have a decrease in hydrogen ions and they have an increase in hydroxide ions. And an example of a base is sodium hydroxide. So acids have the H plus, right? Bases have the OH minus. Now, neutral. What does neutral mean? Neutral is water. You all know that water is neutral. Now, if you look across the, the, the chart that we've got going here, I've got high hydro, hydrogen ions, 
um, on one side and high hydroxide ions on the other side. Hydrogen, hydroxide, mix them together and they make water. So when I have an equal concentration of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions, I have neutral. I have water. I form pH 7. Okay? Now, we have to talk about the math because it's going to come up. So here's the formula as to how you find pH. pH is the negative log base 10 of the hydrogen ion concentration. I will never make you measure that. However, occasionally I will ask you to tell me the difference in the concentrations. So this is, this is what I'm talking about. Um, it's also, by the way, it's really the hydronium ion concentration. We're simplifying, and that's fine for biology to simplify to hydrogen ion. So let's look at our neutral, okay? At our neutral pH, the hydrogen ion concentration is 10 to the minus 7th molarity, okay? 10 to the minus 7th. That's a really little number, but, you know, we are talking about the concentration of hydrogen ions. 10 to the minus 7th. If I go back and I look at pH 2, the concentration there is 10 to the minus 2. That's a much larger number. I have much more hydrogen there because it's a smaller negative exponent. So I'm having, I'm increasing my hydrogen concentration, my hydrogen ion concentration. So how many orders of magnitude bigger is that? Five, right? So if I wanted to look at how many decimal places I needed to move that, it would be 5. Um, and then if I wanted to look at pH 12, I have my hydrogen ions there. It's going to be a 10 to the minus 12 molarity, which is an even smaller. That's a ridiculously small number. So that's really what that pH number, where we're getting the 2 or the 7 or the 12 from. We could um, also look at the measure of the hydroxide ions, but I think that that would just confuse you, so I'm not even going to talk about it. Um, but if you do want to know more about how we do the calculations on pH and acids and bases, or you're confused on hydrophilic, hydrophobic, please come see me in class.